Hey everybody, it's Meredith Miller, your integration coach, and this is another question I have for the Sana Q&A. As I mentioned in the earlier videos, I'm experimenting with this new format where I'm going to isolate one question per video. That way they're just shorter segments and that way people can see very clearly based on the titles and the description if they want to listen to that video. It won't be so overwhelming with such a big file. So let's see how this goes. Feel free to leave comments below and let me know. This person says, hey Meredith, my ex narc came back around after I thought he would not. It's been almost 90 days since he ghosted me. He called me first while I was at work and then when I called back, I could not recognize his voice. That is a good thing because I have been really working hard to erase him out of my memory. When I realized who it was, I blocked him from two numbers I suspected he was calling me from. Fast forward to later that evening when I arrived home, my daughter told me he quote unquote dropped by. She let him in the house, I almost passed out, but we are now both on the same page that he is not to have access to our home anymore. He asked her questions about me like, does your mom think I'm the worst person in the world? Does your mom talk about me at all? Did your mom cry? And the kicker, does she have a boyfriend? Before discovering Sana, I would have been ecstatic to know he was once again seeking me out, but it just confirmed everything you have been teaching. They only care about themselves and only come back because he probably messed up with his other girl, or maybe not. When I asked my daughter his reactions to the answers to his questions, she said nothing. Thank you, Meredith. Pressing forward and not looking back. Okay, so this isn't exactly a question, I'm not exactly sure. I think this person just wanted maybe me to comment on this. Um, so, okay, let's go back to the very beginning. So it's been almost 90 days, almost three months since he ghosted. So for those of you who don't know what that term ghost means, it's just like a ghost. They disappear. They're not really there. This is the person who is like calling and texting you all day long, right? And then all of a sudden they're gone, gone. No call, no text, no nothing, right? So it's like full throttle, zero, from one day to the next, right? And you're like, what happened? They're just like, poof, right? So first of all, it sounds like you already understand what ghosting is and that that's a no-go for you. So for all of you listening who didn't know what ghosting is or if you're getting back out there in the dating arena and you're dating a person and things are going pretty well or maybe they're okay or maybe you're just testing things out and you're receiving you know a certain frequency or intensity of communication and again I don't mean like the love bombing kinds of communication because when you recognize that at the very beginning you want to walk away immediately but maybe this person was like every day contacting you right and then all of a sudden they just disappear all right, so I want you to stop yourself from chasing after that person. Don't reach out, okay? Because if you look at the patterns of communication and the patterns were generally, you know, that person was contacting you several times a day and then suddenly they're gone, they're gone. And that's a game. And you don't want to play that game. You don't want to be chasing after this person who was holding this carrot and then took it away. And now they want you to go run after that carrot and like, never mind. Once a person ghosts, they're done. So make that your sign, right? If you're getting out there in the dating world and you meet someone and suddenly they ghost you, you're done. Make that like an absolute understanding with yourself because what's going to happen when that person comes back around is a whole bunch of bullshit and it's probably going to be the same dynamic that you know where they're going to come in either pretending like nothing happened right and you're supposed to go oh okay this is normal and then that's just going to keep happening it's just always going to be either when you don't give them something that they want because you're not feeling well or just you don't want to do that or you're trying to set a boundary and they don't like your boundary or maybe it's just that you had some really intimate moment and things were amazing and then they just ran away 
doesn't matter why they ran away. The point is that if they run away, that's their pattern and they're always gonna do that. If they do that a few weeks or a few months or the first month or whatever into the dating sort of part of the relationship, you wanna walk away immediately. Don't try to work things out and all that because it's always gonna be that same pattern and that's just gonna be devastating to you because you're gonna feel like you're gonna have this attachment and they're gonna rip it away and they're gonna be like seeking after attachment and they're gonna come back and they're gonna rip it away and it's just gonna keep happening over and over. That's an adult child who has issues. It may or may not be a narcissist. It could be someone on that you know cluster B personality disorder or it just could be an adult child who doesn't know how to deal with their feelings and emotions and so that's how they deal. When the ghosting happens, you're done, right? So don't don't wait for the excuse. Don't listen to, well, you know, life was just really crazy and this and that was going on, you know, because that's a manipulation. And, you know, especially if they come to you and they're like, well, you didn't contact me and you're like, well, that's true rationally, but if you look at the pattern of communication before, that person was predominantly, you know, initiating the contact, not you. It was like them predominantly initiating the contact and you were responding. So it would be an abnormal communication pattern for you to suddenly being the one initiating all the contact because the person who's carrying the masculine energy is the one who's initiating the contact. The masculine energy is the initiation, right? The fire of initiation, the vision, the purpose, the direction. The feminine energy is receptive and open or it's closed, right? But the feminine energy aims to open, to receive. So, you know, the person who's carrying the masculine energy is the one doing that chasing. That may or may not be the man in the relationship. It depends if that's an alpha or beta male. It depends if you are, you know, a more masculine or more feminine woman or what it is that you're looking for or the kind of partner that you tend to attract. So, you know, again, the bottom line is when the ghosting happens, walk away. Don't wait for the excuse. Don't feel like it's your fault and you did something wrong when that person was like the 95% initiation and you were the 5% initiation and now that they're ghosting, they're trying to put it on you like it's your fault, like you should have been reaching out to them. Don't fall for those games. You don't wanna play those games. It will always be that way, okay? So notice those things from the very beginning so that you don't have to get, you know, way down the road and suddenly this person ghosts during the discard, which is often what will happen during the narcissist discard is they're suddenly not happy with you, or you're not giving them what they want, or they found some new person, whatever, and they will discard you and ghost, meaning they disappear, you never hear from them again, or you don't hear from them for months and years later, right? They, they're just gone. And, and that's quite a common move. Um, so this person says, you know, called her first at work with a strange number, didn't even recognize the voice. That's awesome that you didn't feel that connection and it's awesome you didn't even, it's like the voice just felt so strange. It means you've broken the trauma bond. You're out of the Stockholm syndrome because if you were still in that trauma bond, you know, that contact would have re-strengthened that bond, would have re-triggered you back into the trauma bond. So that's awesome because it's only been three months. It's only been like 90 days, she said since he ghosted, that means you've done a lot of self work during that time and you've really been facing reality and truth. That's awesome, good job, because that's a really hard part. Most people just don't wanna accept the truth. That's what keeps that Stockholm Syndrome, that trauma bond, the betrayal bond tight, when people don't want to accept the truth of who that person is, right? So you clearly have accepted that, you clearly have broken the trauma bond, which is awesome because now you're home free. Now you're really moving forward on your healing path. Now what happened with your daughter at home, that's really scary. And I'm really glad it sounds like you and your daughter have this very open relationship. You talked about it and now it's very clear the boundary where she will never open the door to him again and allow him into your house. That was really tricky what he did, you know, she probably knew this doesn't feel right, he's not supposed to be here, but being that he's her dad, you know, she opened that up to him and his manipulation and all of that. She knows who he is, right? So it's awesome that you talk to her. It's awesome too that like, just because of that, you also know like how pathetic he is, that like he went to your daughter now to extract information about you to see if you're dating someone else, to see if he has a chance to suck you dry some more, you know, to find out if you cried about it. This man is sick, 
right? So, I mean, if you had any doubt, hopefully by now, like you have zero, zero doubt, hopefully your daughter is also like really starting to recognize like something ain't right with Poppy there. Um, and good thing too, that now you guys have also had that conversation, you and your daughter about the boundaries, you know, he's never allowed in that house again, that she doesn't have to feel the responsibility to open that door to him or anything. And that she doesn't owe him the responsibility of answering his questions ever, like inside the house or outside the house, or like maybe he shows up at school, you know, and like pretends to pick her up or whatever and give her a ride. So she doesn't have to take the bus or something, but really he's just trying to extract information from her. Hopefully she's realizing now, you know, what he's doing um, to get to you. And you're right, you know, they only care about themselves. He only came back because he either messed up with the next supply or she figured out what was going on and took off or he was unable to secure the next supply or, you know, he jumped out and didn't have a next supply and he's been somehow getting by, you know, by abusing people at work or his family or something else, his family of origin. And now he's like really desperate for that next supply. So he's coming back, you know, doesn't matter what happened. I don't recommend investing a lot of energy in that. The point is that now, you know, he's trying to get back in. That probably won't be the last you hear from him he's probably gonna you know, escalate because that's what happens is it escalates, right? Whatever they start with, the next time it's a little bit more and it's a little bit more and it's a little bit more and it just keeps escalating. So keep your boundaries strong. I would um, start not answering unknown phone calls. Just let that go to voicemail. You know, even at work, let it go to voicemail. If it's something important, if it's something work related, obviously they're gonna leave a message. If it's him, they're probably not gonna leave, a, he's not gonna leave a message, right? So uh, screen your calls, you have the right to do that. Listen to your intuition and you know keep the dialogue open with your daughter because that's gonna be a lifetime relationship that she's gonna have with her father. And keeping the dialogue open keeps her safe from his abuse, hopefully, and also so that you have the opportunity to pass on the lessons that you are learning from this and potentially other abusive situations that you've been in so that your daughter doesn't follow the same path. You know, by telling her, look, these are mistakes that I made. Here's, you know, all of the suffering that I went through because I didn't know this, that, and the other. And unfortunately, I just didn't know this, that, and the other. And I know this, that, and the other now so I'm gonna avoid those situations and I wanna pass this knowledge and wisdom on to you, dear daughter, so that you don't have to go through this you know, in the future. And you also wanna be very cautious that she is not attracting negative, toxic, manipulative men like her father because that's gonna be her natural inclination is unconsciously she will seek out a man like her father in some way. So you wanna pay good attention you know, and, and always have that open dialogue with her where when you express your vulnerability and you share with her, hopefully then that opens up the door to that reciprocity where she will feel comfortable talking to you about her issues and her questions, you know, dating people and meeting guys or girls, you know, whoever that she's gonna be dating out in the world so that, you know, you can always be there for her, help her learn from your experiences so that she doesn't have to keep repeating the past so that she can be you know set free from that transgenerational pattern so i am sending you and your daughter a big hug and you handled that really well like really really well i'm proud of you i hope you celebrated that and i hope that you and your daughter are celebrating that as well